Hey, hello everyone, Pally Tom here. Welcome back to the A through Z playthrough. Hope you guys are doing well today. Very short and sweet intro for you. We're playing May in today's episode. I love playing tanks and heroes. It's my favorite role to play. And I was actually really looking forward to this character coming up because when she was released, just like every other character when they're released, I didn't dedicate a lot of time to them. If it's new, I let it brew. <laughs> <laughs> if it's old, it gets the gold. Wow, I just came up with a new slogan. May's win rate is 49.85% with a popularity of 16.67. Very popular. Look at her go. She has a pick rate of 12.36% and a ban rate of 4.6%. That's pretty high ban rate. I imagine you wouldn't want to play her on Infernal Shrines. Is that right? When would you guys ban May? Let me know down in the comments. Uh, very short and sweet intro today because I am tired. I've been talking for a long time and I am ready to stop. Uh, I did about five practice games. Uh, more than that. I played maybe three hours tonight just doing practice games for May. Leading up to this video, we hit the record button and what we got is what we got. I hope you guys enjoy it. I had a lot of fun making this, and I hope you enjoy watching it. Like I said, short and sweet today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves on Sky Temple today. The friendly team, May the Butcher, Cassia, Brightwing, and Artanis. The enemy team, Lunara, Deckard Kane, Blaze, Zuljin, and Nazebo. At level one, we're going to go for Ice Storm. Every third hit of Blizzard against enemy heroes deals an additional 44 damage. Blizzard's final stun damage is also increased by 150% against all enemies, not just heroes. So this is going to be increasing our lane clear as well as our potency in the middle of team fights. Both things I really, really like. I've been, uh, I would say doing about, I'm on like hour three of practice games with May getting ready for this video. And it has been such a pleasure. Uh, whether or not the games were complete clusters or not, the character design is just so fun, especially for someone who enjoys tanking as much as I do. For instance, you can do bullshit like this <laughs> and just run right into an enemy team and get totally punished for it because we're not immortal. What do you think? I was going to get away from that. That was terrible, bros. I really didn't think I was going to get away from that. Anyway, our Q ability is Snowblind. Throw a snowball that hits all enemies in an area. Enemies take damage. They're slowed by 35% and blinded for uh, 1.75 seconds. So it does damage. It's at range. It slows and blinds. What crazy strong ability is this? On a 10-second cooldown as well. Our W ability is Blizzard. This does an area of effect around our little ice drone. By the way, why is this not just called Snowball? Why is this Blizzard when there's another Blizzard in the game, but this is Snowblind? Bro, call it what it is. You're throwing a snowball at somebody. Our E ability is so exciting. It's called Icing. This allows us to skate forward and um, deal damage to anyone in a radius around us. Knock them back, depending on our positioning, or I guess displace them would be a more accurate term. And this has a, such a great combo with our Blizzard. We can basically set it up and then keep people inside of it. Super duper fun. Like this Dingo, for instance. Boom. He's stunned. Anyone want to follow up on this? Because I'm okay with that. I don't know if that was the right guy to follow up on. But we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Let me get in the way so those guys don't kill off our Butcher. Uh, our trait is the cryo freeze. I probably use this a little more often than I should. Uh, my mentality is I just want to get the cooldown ticket away on it. I don't want it ever just sitting there waiting for something to do. This does put us in an ice block and uh, allows us to regenerate a pretty substantial amount of our HP. In fact, a lot of our HP. Let me try to keep these guys back. Oh no, there's the blizzard. Keep running, keep running, keep running. Trying to protect our little dude the best we can, you know? Best we can, we gotta feed him. Uh, Blizzard cr reduces ice and cooldown. This is going to allow me to maneuver around a little bit more. Anyway, uh, allows us to heal for 35% of our maximum HP with our trait. Uh, and on a 40 second cooldown as well. It's actually such a, such a high amount of healing. So I try to take advantage of that as often as I can. I'm going to try really hard not to feed like I did to start this game off. But it looks like the enemy team isn't dying either. So the Butcher actually getting some meat under his belt. 
is proving to be a little more difficult than it would be in most games. Artanis moving back to go in on Lunara. Let's try to get the Blizzard here. The icing to keep him in it. Beautifully done. I'm not chasing that any further. He could deal with that. Now, uh, I've talked about a lot of pros for May. Great mobility, great crowd control, uh, good area of effect, really engaging kit. So what are the downsides? Well, her kits, uh, her, her damage sucks. <laughs> like, it's really bad. It's really bad. It does get better as the game goes on, but like right now, if if I was in a 1v1, I would lose to most players, and uh, most characters in the game, I think. <laughs> it would be pretty hard, actually. Good swap into... Oh, let's make sure we blind him. Wow, I was just sitting there letting him attack. That was pretty bad. Uh, Lunara chasing me down is going to force me back. I do have a blizzard I could try to put in these guys' paths to hopefully keep our Cassia safe. Wasn't enough to save Artanis. Uh, meanwhile, in the middle lane, no one is channeling this. This is a super duper easy opportunity. The Butcher's very close as well, but not moving up to the objective. You hate to see it. Uh, I'm going to be able to heal myself in five seconds, but we can also pick up backup battery at level seven. This is on a 70 second cooldown. I believe it gets lowered when we pick up region globes, but this just allows me to heal for 20% of my maximum health at the press of a key. So between our trait and that, we can heal for 50% of our maximum HP. Butcher going in on Lunara, dealing some decent damage too. However, I had the complete opposite idea. I was backing up right then. Nazebo moving in, trying to hit me with some spiders. We do move out of the way just in time now Deckard Kane trying to make his way out of here let's hit him with the snowball slow him down and completely surround him on all sides with our friendly team what's my sippy cup looking like okay we'll sip and then we'll go and we'll keep soaking we'll try to keep momentum going in the right direction for our team I knew I liked May when she came out. I really enjoyed playing her. I just, I don't know. There's some mental block in my head where like if something's new, I'm scared of it. I like to let other people figure out what they're doing and then I can jump in and be like, hey guys, it's so easy. Just do this. It's so fun. Unfortunately, missed all of my control spells on the enemy team's dingo here, but the chase is continuing. Great polymorph to stop him from potentially healing there as Brightwing does teleport in. Very, very, very nicely done. Uh, bottom lane is going to be where the next objective is. So if we can get this pushed prior to the objective happening, that can be really, really good. There are a couple big mercenary camps that could help us do that, but those are both taken down right now. Actually, this one just came back up. We're coming up on level 10 pretty quick. Hey, bud. There's the butcher stun. He was swapped out of my stun. Artanis, whose team are you on? There we go with the icing, trying to keep him in range of everybody. I'm going to pop my backup battery just to get some extra health flowing out here. I'm also going to get inside of my ice cube so I can think about my talent choice. Perfect. Nazebo is not going to be hit by... Hey, hey guys. Woo. Hey, guys. Hey, let's get out of there, man. Totally out of mana, unfortunately. I couldn't do anything there even if I wanted to. Kind of sucks that we left that camp so easily... For them to take but um hopefully we can get this before the next objective uh speaking of camps top lane getting totally siege brightwing does see it and is pinging for assistance looks like our uh our Tannis is heading up there i'm just gonna get full mana before this objective i did pick up avalanche at level 10 it's such a fun ability one of my favorite in the whole game allows you to displace anyone that gets caught by it does take a second to form so it can be a little tricky Ooh, big damage on cassia is she gonna be able to get away brightwing not able to teleport to her by the looks of things and the enemy team just running it down the bottom lane right now. We're going to ping for some more assistance. The objective's about to happen anyway, so these guys should be rotating in pretty soon. Uh, I'm going to hit my sip pretty early here. Butcher rotating down is getting engaged on pretty hard. We are actually behind the enemy team, which is kind of right where we want to be. We're going to take their front line and their healer and hopefully push them back into our base. Unfortunately, that uh, didn't work out. Who would have guessed that? I thought that was a pretty good play. I thought that was gonna work out, no problem. 
Cassie is still working her way down here, but unfortunately this is a 3v5 at best. So I don't know how much we're actually gonna be doing. The enemy team, rather than getting the objective, is just continuing the push in here though. I'm trying to zone to the best of my ability. Cassia joining us now. Let's put the blizzard down behind these guys. Uh, we do see Blaze taking a shit ton of damage and the bouncing lightning from Cassia ripping right through him. Now this is looking a little more manageable. Without the front line, this team might be more vulnerable. I'm going to cut off the escape here. Butcher's coming in through the front right now. We're going to leave a blizzard right over here. I'm going to have to hit my ice block pretty early on. Here's the backup battery as well. We do just barely manage to get out of Nazebo zombie wall. The friendly team does pick up a kill on Tazdingo, who is down at the bottom of the objective somewhere. We didn't get all of this objective, but we got a decent amount of it, and we are going to get the final shots that are going to start to head towards the enemy team. We're pretty far behind on Siege. The enemy team has a two building lead but we should be able to make up for that here especially if the butcher starts hitting a building that matters he should start to chunk this pretty fast he's at 165 meat so a little bit of room to go before he finishes his quest at 200 but i mean there's a minion wave right here you can get that nazebo for the enemy team pushing middle right now yeah they got some pretty good map pressure boys they got some pretty good map pressure pretty good pretty good decker cane for the enemy team is spotted in the jungle the butcher pretty far forward down there but it looks like he is mounting up right now so i don't think he has anything to worry about uh i'm gonna head up top and just try to keep that moving uh, we're kind of getting to the point of the game where my siege is pretty okay. I just picked up Polar Vortex at level 13. So now whenever I cast a spell, we're also going to radiate damage around us, which means that I can actually push back these lanes pretty okay. It's not a ton of damage by any means, but it's something. It's something. Uh, I hope they're not fighting. I'm going to ping a lot of backs there just to be sure. No reason to fight there. No building to fall back to. No reason to posture like you're about to beat up the enemy team. It's just not going to happen. Just not gonna happen. Friendly team is moving in for our Merc camp here, though. I definitely like that play a lot more. If I can get a Blizzard on middle lane, this should push it into the uh, building for the enemy team as well. That middle fort for the enemy team. Zombie wall does catch our Cassia. Blaze kind of in position here, but <laughs> he isn't getting very far. At least right now. Decker Kane with a huge sleep is going to stop us all in our tracks. I'm going to use my backup battery. Put a blizzard down where I think Blaze is going to go. I also tried to use my shielding there, but it wasn't quite enough. I'm just going to remove Tazdingo from this equation. I didn't want him beating me up. I want to preserve my health bar as best I can. Unlike whoever that was, that was way too far forward. Looks like it was our Artanis. The next objective is up. We should, what, 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 what? No avalanche. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, they did use some ults. Okay, was this a five head play from the butcher or? Uh, I don't know, bro. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's kind of working out, I guess. The enemy team still hasn't gotten on that top objective. They actually went for a Merc camp as well. So, I mean, it was just, just a really good play, and I, I didn't recognize it. What I normally like to do is have one person on the objective, because if one person's on it, the enemy team will just do a, just assume everybody's on it. Uh, looks like I am holding down bottom by myself as the friendly team is rotating up top. Artanis fighting in the lane underneath the objective, even though there's only one person on the objective. So he should definitely move up there. Looks like he did get the memo and is starting to head for it. Uh, at level 16, we are going to take Black Ice. Increases the slow and deals more damage to enemies very close to me. Uh, looks like it's time for me to go. Ooh, that didn't go well. It's okay. I could die down here. I got most of the objective. I almost got the final shot, too. I shouldn't have used my ultimate for no reason. I should just held on to it. It's kind of a desperation thing because that's going to be on cooldown when I get back. But we got most of that. That's totally fine. The enemy team rotating on and after killing a boss. I should uh, stop fucking talking and start looking at the game a little bit more, I think. Uh, is the Butcher's Quest done? It is. So he is very stacked up. The enemy team pushing the bottom lane for our tier two keep down there. Uh, we're going to be back up in just 10 seconds. And it looks like they weren't very committed to this push anyway.
Oh, maybe not. We are starting to see some more health potions down on the ground. They just didn't want to tank any of the building, I guess. Butcher charging in on Blaze. Does catch him by himself. The polymorph into the silence was out there as well. He got absolutely eaten alive, playing a little too far forward by the looks of things. Zebo and Deckard. And, oh, the whole team exiting out of the top here. Avalanche is up in 28 seconds. I'm going to clear middle lane. Ooh, nice swap. Let's follow it up. Knock this guy back. I got some blinds out on these dudes. I'm literally just moving into them and trying to attack to keep their attention. It does look like <laughs> the enemy team's dingo was able to just kind of walk away there. We do have Nazebo in a bad spot. We are going to be able to body block him and trying to move into the enemy team's Lunara to cut her off, but wasn't quite able to do so. A lot of spiders chasing after Brightwing. She needs to be careful. Butcher decided not not to even participate in that fight. That feels pretty fucking bad. Uh, let's put a blizzard down on the lane. And I think I'm just going to have to go. Oh, can't. Ooh, oh, no. Oh, no. Blaze was running right for me. That actually scared me quite a lot. He could have gotten me there for sure. Uh, one more mercenary camp to pick up prior to the next objective starting. Let's put a blizzard on this and try to just focus it down as fast as we can. I'm definitely going back immediately after this is done. Definitely go back. Now, whoever gets these objectives are going to be doing some pretty meaningful damage to the tier two structures of the enemy team. We are seeing the Butcher finish off a mercenary camp. I'm going to be close enough to get this regen globe to top my health off. Perfect. A large grouping of the enemy team heading for the central area now. I'm just going to poke at these guys. I'm not trying to commit too hard, but I also didn't want to give up this vision for no reason. Butcher heading to the top of the screen is trying to get an angle behind these guys. I'm just trying to move up to give them some vision here. Uh, potentially in a bad spot. Let me go ahead and ice block this. I am also going to use my backup battery. Looks like Dingo is popping his unkillable. That actually went totally fine. Artanis. No, Cassia this time going way too far forward. Nice. I like this. I'm going to cut these guys off as they're trying to run away. Kick Nazebo out to the middle of nowhere. I do have a little bit of health remaining. We hit the snowball on Blaze right before I'm taken down. And now our friendly team is looking pretty good. Uh, top lane is being pushed by Merc Camp right now. Four members of the enemy team are dead. We have the level 20 lead right now as well. Things are looking good. Up. Butcher going for a camp steal instead of doing anything else. I think that's fine, especially when you know where the only member of the enemy team is currently residing. Now that we're level 20, we're going to go for Flash Freeze. This is a very defensive talent, just like Johanna's Cheat Death, where if you are going to take fatal damage, all of a sudden it just stops you from taking fatal damage. It's also going to put us inside of our Ice Block that we have on our trait for free. So we can actually use our Ice Block uh, then after it ends, go take enough damage to cause our cheat death to happen. And then we get another one for free, even if it is on cooldown, which is very, very strong. The enemy team starting to respawn. I'm in a little bit of a bad spot here, especially if I get rooted, but we do manage to sidestep that just barely. Speaking of roots, the enemy team's dingo throwing one out on me, but this looks like a pretty straightforward, just back away situation. What is, <laughs> whoa, but you're, you know what? Maybe you're on something with this maybe i'm in the wrong here two members of the enemy team moving to the top lane i kind of want to see if i can take this oh and they're taking the bait too this could be good uh we're gonna kick the enemy team's deckard cane towards our cassia hoping that she could finish him off unfortunately it looks like that was a little bit of the opposite of what happened bought him some more time there to start getting away we do see blaze taking a lot of damage we could at least cut his escape off uh, the boss does manage to take down that tier two structure. We got a pretty good, oh, perfect. Pretty good blizzard on the back line there, which manages to catch the enemy team's dingo. Now we just skate ahead of Nazebo. We can hit him with a blind two just for good measure, just to finish him off. And now with the friendly team at our backs, we are pushing in for the final hurrah on the core. Butcher should definitely be hitting it. 
instead of walking around. But this was a pretty okay game. I would actually say I had less cool plays in this game than I did in all of my warm-up games. I think the Avalanche is so much fun. I've stolen bosses with it tonight, just kicking people off the capture point. I have push people into our base because one thing to remember about this ability is it actually goes over walls which is insane so not only does it gobble everybody up in its path but you could put them basically right next to your keep and just get them killed it's so crazy strong i've always really loved tanking in this game so i was really looking forward to playing some may i put it off for a really long time for absolutely no reason she is a super duper fun character and i thoroughly enjoy this build i kind of theory crafted everything i wanted to do and it all came together with this. So at level one, I went for Icy Storm, Cold Front, Backup Battery, Avalanche, Polar Vortex, Black Ice, and Flash Freeze. And here are the stats for the game. Two deaths. Eh, one of them was pretty bad. 81,000 Siege. I actually out sieged my team. 35,000 Hero Damage, which was more than the Butcher. To be fair, he had a lot of bosses he was killing, though. That was a busy man right there. That was a busy... Man, and let's not sell it short. 20,000 self-healing as well between our trait and the backup battery. That is pretty good. Let's go do it for today's episode, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back soon with Mephisto. Take care. See you again soon.